Good afternoon, democracy folks. Mr. Walker here bringing federalism to ya. We've covered a little bit of it in class. Let's get to it. All right, so federalism is defined as a state, a system of government in which the powers are divided between the national and the state governments. We've talked about that before. All right, and that is established through the 10th Amendment, which pretty much says whatever's not spelled out in the Constitution, well, the re those powers are left up to the and to the people in the states, okay? So uh, federalism allows different variations and differences between the states. Why do they do that? <clears throat> they do this because to leave local actions and matters uh, of local concern to local people, okay? What matters in Wisconsin might not matter in Montana, might not matter in New York, okay? But national actions are of a wider concern. So the federal government will take care of national or things that impact the whole country, whereas states are left up to decide things for themselves. Because states are different socially, politically, and economically, okay? Um, um, in Wisconsin might have some state, some laws that um, are more protecting of agriculture because agriculture and farming is a big thing in the state of Wisconsin, but that might not necessarily be the case in a different state, okay? So let's take a look at some of these differences. Some of these differences you buy, but if you go south of the border into Illinois, you are going to run into a sales tax that is 8.8%, okay? So that's it's a higher sales tax or income tax. Some states charge you nothing like the state of Florida, but then Wisconsin's gonna charge you an income tax or an inheritance tax. So when someone dies, um, they, whenever, whatever money you inherit from them, the state may take some from you, but some states may not. <clears throat> All right, so this is just allows, like some states are different, some laws and states are gonna be very similar. All right, voting, for example, in the state of Wisconsin, you can register to vote on the day of the election. You can walk right into the place. They'll have paperwork for you to fill out. You fill it out. You hand it to them. You go give them their name. They give you a ballot. Bam, you're in and out. But you might take a place like Pennsylvania where you have to register to vote a month before the election. If you don't do that, boom, can't vote. All right? Or residency in the state of Wisconsin. If you move within 28 days of the election, you actually aren't considered a resident of that area. You can't register to vote in that area. So like say if you went from the township to the city, um, within less than a month, you could fill in a mail-in ballot, okay, or early voting. So make sure you avoid that if you're gonna move somewhere. All right, gun laws are different, okay? In some states you can be 18 to own a rifle, but in the state of Wisconsin, you got to be 21 to hold that hand or own a handgun. Some states have concealed carry, all right? Illinois has come around to this, but you have to own a FOID card and jump through some other hoops to get this concealed carry permit. In the state of Wisconsin, you got to take a class and then you have this permit and you're able to carry it. Um, some states recognize other states' concealed carry weapons. Some states have open carry weapons, like the state of Wisconsin. You could put your gun on your hip. As long as it's not tucked under your shirt, it's sticking out and everyone can see it, that's called open carry. You're allowed to do that. Or you can sling your rifle over your shoulder and walk down the street. You're not breaking any laws. Right? You're able to do that. But in the state of California, can't open carry. They're going to pull you over. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. Other states, uh, some states are looking to ban AR-15s and assault rifles. Other states will, you know, give you a free gun if you buy a house, right? They've, they've done stuff like this before, All right? Education in the state of Wisconsin, you can drop out of high school at 18. Not recommended. Please don't do that. Please talk to me before you decide to do that. There's some options for you to be able to graduate. Or you could drop out at 16 with parent consent in some states, all right? Um, some states will have different required classes, all right? And, uh, you know, uh, in the state of Wisconsin, you have to pass the citizenship test, all right, in order to, before you can graduate. So that's a state law. Other states might not have that. Or some states will say you have to take this class, while other states say, well, you don't have to take that class, but you got to take this class before you can, um, before you can graduate. Or the length of the school year. You know, we're 180 day, 180 days in Wisconsin, it's going to be less in other states. So there's just differences. Different states do things differently depending on what they value. 
driving laws like the age of driving in south dakota you can drive at 14 and a half speed limits are going to be different in the state of wisconsin your interstate speed is 70 miles an hour when i lived in oklahoma they were 70 miles an hour down there but back in wisconsin at that time they were only 65. Uh, but then when i traveled into texas texas has 70 mile an hour on the interstate but at nighttime it's 65 so slow down right seatbelt laws and fines all right blood alcohol content when I lived in uh, Oklahoma, it was 0 0.05, so that's less than a beer. In the state of Wisconsin, it's 0 0.08. That is one beer or shot, okay? So different laws in different states when it comes to driving in itself or marriage and divorce, all right? The age of consent of when to get married. Is it 18? Is it 16? Maybe should it be older? Who, who can you marry, all right? Some people marry their cousins. Um, is that legal in some states or is it illegal in some states, all right? What does it take to get a marriage license? Or some states make you take a blood test to make sure you're not related to them, all right? Marital property, like who gets what? Is it split from the beginning, all right? Is there no fault divorce? Like, hey, we just don't like each other. Let's split. Or maybe one of them was abusive, so you need a reason in order to leave. Or some states might give you a waiting period, all right? Like, uh, let's wait a month. Let's like really sleep on this to make sure that you really want to get married to this person. All right. Or alcohol and drugs. We've talked about this, like how some states we can go 15 minutes over the border and there is legal marijuana dispensaries. OK, <clears throat> um, whereas uh, alcohol and drug laws vary from different states to states, uh, 21 and older all over the country when it comes to alcohol. But in the state of Wisconsin, if you're with your parents in a bar and the bar and your parents order a drink and hand it to you, if the bartender's okay with that, that goes okay in the state of Wisconsin, not in any other state that I'm aware of, but that will go in the state of Wisconsin where and when it's sold. When I lived in Oklahoma, um, their alcohol was actually less alcohol content than regular alcohol if you bought it at like a restaurant or a bar. Beers were 3.5% alcohol, which they're usually around 5%. If you did get full alcohol content beer from like a liquor store, it was warm. They had no coolers whatsoever, never kept anything chill. All right. Bar times are different. Is it two o'clock or is it two thirty? Is it extended on the afternoon? Do we sell beer on Sundays or do we not sell beer on Sunday? <clears throat> All right. Punishments and crime, fines, penalties, death penalties. States are different to different. Like speeding 20 miles an hour will be different in the state of Wisconsin than it would be maybe in Montana. OK, or if you commit a crime. Are you murder someone like, can you get the death penalty? Not in the state of Wisconsin, but if you go to Texas, they use it, folks. They use it. Hunting and fishing license, car license. What does it take to become a teacher in the state of Wisconsin? It's going to be different from what becomes how to become a teacher in the state of uh, Oklahoma or New York, right? What does, it become, what does it take to become a cosmetologist in one state over the other, right? What does a hunting or fishing license give you, right? Are you able to get a buck and a doe with a hunting license or can you only get a doe do you have to shoot a doe before you can get a buck like states are different from you know from here and there and what it takes gambling what type if any right or where can you do you have to do it on a riverboat like these states or can they be casino types like these ones or do they have to be riverboat land-based are they native american casinos okay who can and cannot gamble welfare you know how long do you get these government assistance how much do you get all right abortion is going to be different from state to state especially now with the supreme court overturning roe v wade uh what age you can get it where you can get it parental notification okay some states are going to say yes you can and other states are going to say no you can't some are going to require a waiting period some are not all right, so the division of powers spelled out in the Constitution, there's the delegated powers. There's three types of delegated powers. These are powers that are granted to the national government. Okay, there's three types. The express, those are directly written and spelled out in the Constitution, all right? Congress ha will declare war, okay? Congress coins money and uh, directs commerce, okay? Otherwise, there's implied. These are the powers that are interpreted and expanded from the express. Those are the ones that fall into the necessary and proper cause, right? So an example of an implied would be 
establishing the IRS to tax the people because it says Congress can tax people. Well, it doesn't say that Congress can set up the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, but because they can handle taxes, they can set this business up, right? They can print the money. Um, they have the right to direct the military so they can create a military draft, right? They Because they can direct commerce and money, they can set a minimum wage. But then there's inherent, right? These are powers that belong to the national government because, well, it's a big deal. It's the national government. The national government should take care of this, such as immigration, right? Controlling the borders. Or take, for example, Obama raised the minimum wage in the executive branch. Now, this is a power that only Congress can do, but because Obama was head, he's inherently in a head and in charge of the executive branch, he can actually change the minimum wage of the entire executive branch. All right. So know those three different types. And then there's the reserved powers. Those are powers that are held and kept by the state. So whatever's not given to the national government, the states can use it, all right? So local governments get their powers from the state governments, all right? There's exclusive powers. These are powers granted only to the federal government. Only the federal government can touch this, okay? Immigration, states can't handle that, all right? That is the federal thing, all right? Um, but there are concurrent powers where the powers are shared between both the national and the state government. So like taxes, states can charge you an income tax and the federal government can charge you an income tax, right? So they both can do it, concurrent meaning both together, right? But there is a supremacy clause that says the United States Constitution is above all other forms of law. You cannot break this. This is the supreme law of the land, okay? And that also goes with like if a state law is in conflict with the federal law, the federal law always wins, all right? That is also like setting up these drug laws. Um, marijuana is still illegal according to the federal government so these states that are doing it the federal government can come bust them down and take it out and there's nothing they could honestly do about it but states do have interstate relations like the framers knew there would be issues between the states so let's set up some provisions so that everybody cooperates and gets along the first thing is the full faith and credit clause all right this says that every state must honor another state's public acts civil laws records court records this is birth certificates high school diplomas you can't go to the state of alabama and be like oh you got a high school diploma from wisconsin sorry we don't hire people for high school diplomas from wisconsin no that is illegal discrimination okay driver's license they recognize your driver's license as you drive through another state marriage license this is a big one because before uh 2015 when the supreme court made same-sex marriage legal in all 50 states same-sex couples would leave their home state and go to a state that allowed same-sex marriage get the marriage license there get married there and go back to their home state and their home state actually had to recognize that okay another major part of this full faith and credit clause is extradition all right if you commit a crime in one state but you run away to that other state that other state has to extradite you back to the state where you committed the crime all right and then a resident of one state may not be discriminated unreasonably by another state so if you get pulled over for speeding in the state of illinois they can't be like oh well you're from wisconsin we're gonna double that fine for you that is unreasonable but a reasonable discrimination would be out of state fees for college tuition all right so if you go to go to college in Illinois, but you're from Wisconsin, they can charge you more, right? That is reasonable. Or hunting, a, a hunting license in the state of Wisconsin, like a deer hunting license is like 20 bucks. But if you come from Illinois, gonna be 125, all right? You have to obey the laws of other states. You can't be like, oh, I didn't know that was the law, all right? Ignorance isn't an excuse, folks, all right? Um, and you're able to actually sue people or groups from a different state if they unreasonably discriminate against you. And then there's interstate compacts, all right? These are agreements between states over common concerns. Like if there's a highway or an interstate that goes between states, all right, that would be an agreement between the state of Wisconsin and the state of Illinois. Or prisons, shipping prisoners from one state to another maybe one state their jails are all filled up and they know there's extra space down in mississippi so they will ship their uh prisoners down there that that's a interstate compact it's an agreement between them or police support right like south beloit can come into beloit because uh because if they're in a hot pursuit they can stay in a pursuit and beloit actually appreciates appreciates that all right <clears throat> And that concludes this lecture. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in class the next day. Have a great day, guys.